I don't know who needs to hear this, but soy is not a health food. I'm Dr. Andrew Neville. I specialize in treating adrenal fatigue and have for over 20 years. The majority of my patients are women, and we talk about then soy, what's this relationship with estrogen, and what about the thyroid, and it's this healthy thing. No, ultimately it's not. You know, we jumped on the bandwagon here as we tend to do as Americans, right? There was some research that came out of Japan where there were decreased cancer risks and uh, prostate cancer, breast cancer, some other health benefits. And these researchers thought, well, they eat a lot of soy over there, right? So maybe it's the fact that they eat all this soy that causes the benefit, right? So then we took that research, extrapolated it, brought it to America and used it to capitalize on the fact that we can farm soy and make a really cheap source of protein. We can stick that protein in all kinds of processed foods and we can use this research over here to market it like we're doing something healthy where really we're just kind of lining our pockets and, and kind of promoting this, this agribusiness situation. All right, so what are the facts, right? What really is the deal with soy? So soy, soybeans, right? There is protein in soy. The way Asian people and Japanese people use soy is they ferment the soy. When you ferment soy as a food, you essentially are processing out some of the anti-nutrients, things like phytates. You're almost pre-digesting that food, right? And that fermentation process, breaking down some of the sugars and things. And you're turning it into a food that is edible, that is good for you. Things like tempeh, tofu, miso, at least if it's made in that traditional way, right? But we saw it as, well, it's just soy, right? Soy is soy is soy, which absolutely it is not. So now we grow a bunch of soy. We have this isolated soy protein. We'll stick it in protein shakes. We'll stick it in all these processed foods. That is far different than the way Asian cultures ate soy. Okay, so what's, what's the big deal regardless? The first thing is it is highly hyperallergenic, right? A lot of people are sensitive or allergic to soy, especially that isolated soy, which is a foreign protein, right? Now we've manipulated it. We had something nature provided, we fermented it and made a food out of it, but now we isolated it, changed it, got our grubby little hands in there and kind of messed it up a little bit. So that soy protein is highly hyperallergenic. A lot of people are sensitive to it. Second thing is it contains, soy is a, is a phytoestrogen. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but soy has some isoflavones in it, genistein and diazdin. These are isoflavones that are phytoestrogens. So phytoestrogens are essentially weak estrogens. So there's a molecule, these isoflavones, part of that molecule looks like estrogen. So it's a weak binder of estrogen receptors, which means it can modulate somebody's estrogens. So let's say in a woman, the estrogen's high. If you, if you consume a phytoestrogen, a weak estrogen, It'll bind some of those receptors as a weak estrogen, kicking off some of the stronger estrogens, and you can effectively kind of lower that estrogenic effect. Or if you have a woman that has lower estrogen and you add even a weak estrogen, well, that's gonna bind some receptors so you can actually strengthen that estrogen. So it has this modulating effect on estrogen levels. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but if I want that phytoestrogen effect, I'm gonna use genistein, right? Or I'm gonna use diazin or as a capsule, as a molecule, get that specific isoflavone, not necessarily that soy protein. Now, the other piece of that is that soy antagonizes thyroid hormone. The research is kind of blurred on that as to why that happens, but we do know that things that are higher in soy tend to have anti-thyroid types of effects. And the last thing has to do with these phytates that I've mentioned. When you don't ferment the soy, those phytates last and they're anti-nutrients. They kind of bind minerals and in and of themselves is not a bad thing. There's phytates in a lot of natural foods, but when you take them in excess, you can bind some minerals and it can cause problems. So soy is not a health food. It is a cheap source of protein sold to us by big agribusiness to be stuck in food uh, really as a way to just give us a cheap source of protein. Not ideal. I pulled a book. One of the books I like about this is The Whole Soy Story by Kayla Daniel, she's a PhD. The book's almost 20 years old now that I realized it. It's a good source if you want to get to it. So, soy is not a health food. By all means, if you like this video, um, leave a comment. Let us know your experiences with soy. Did you react allergically to it? Did it mess with your thyroid? 
And again, I'm not blasting soy. Um, healthy soy, right? The way Asian culture traditionally made it, miso tofu tempeh, perfectly fine, everything in moderation. All my best.